Yo, yo, YouTube, what's up with your boy, Sports and Fitness Rants? I'm back, guys. Click that like button. Subscribe to my channel. What's up, y'all? Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. Got another great video for you guys today. As usual, you know the deal on this channel. We must continue to put some respect on Michael Jordan, man. Put some respect on the 80s and the 90s, man. Stop the lies. Stop the narratives. Stop these guys from rewriting history, bending reality, man. We cannot allow this. We must continue to stand up. And in this video, we're going to speak about Michael Jordan and how, once again, he's held to a higher standard because Michael Jordan now, they'll tell us all these years later, he wasn't that great on defense. Scottie Pippen was guarding the other team's best player, right? This is the standard that Michael Jordan's held to. I've told you, Michael Jordan needed to lead the NBA in scoring. He needed to carry the Bulls offensively and guard the other team's best player all the time. Only Michael Jordan is supposed to do this stuff, right? Only Michael Jordan. No one else had to do this in the history of the NBA, guys. We're going to talk about this video. And you guys, I want to thank everybody out there, man, for real, man. I am truly humbled, guys, by all the respect, man, all the love. It, man, you guys commenting, man, it, it means a lot, guys, for real. I am truly, truly humbled, man. You guys have donated to my channel, man. Everybody in the membership, man, anyone who's ever donated, guys, I am truly humbled, man. I know money is hard to come by for a lot of us, guys. I always tell you that, man, because those are the facts, guys. Those are the cold, hard reality for a lot of us in this world, man. I told you, I'm not here for the money, the fame. I'll never be well off. I'll never be quote unquote rich or have money like that. I'll never be famous. And that's okay. I've told you guys that. That's okay. That's not what it's about in this world. And I'm going to shout out to everybody in the membership, man. E.T., could do George Bryce, Sikkim Savage, Tor Forlin, Mac Man, Jaco, Health Life and Dental Insurance, Lizard Lounge, James Williams, and my man Ken S. Shout out to all you guys in the membership, man. Much respect. And you guys know what to do. Turn the volume all the way up. Hit that play button. Remember, these videos are for educational purposes. And let's roll. <clears throat> So, yes, guys, <laughs> like I said, man, you guys know the deal on this channel. I've told you guys many, many times that Michael Jordan's held to a higher standard. And we've talked about different situations about how Michael Jordan is held to a higher standard than anyone else in history. Right? I've told you guys, only Michael Jordan is not allowed to have any help. Right. So they constantly bring up Scottie Pippen. Right. Michael Jordan can't have any help. Right. Only Michael Jordan has won championships with help. No one else has had help in NBA's history. Only Michael Jordan, right? We've talked about the Phil Jackson angle. Only Michael Jordan played for a great coach. No one else had a great coach in NBA's history. Only Michael Jordan, right? These are the standards that Michael Jordan is held to that no other player is held to in the history of the NBA because this is the bar, right, that Michael Jordan set. This is the standard that he set. I told you, I had someone tell me Michael Jordan choked in the 96 NBA Finals because what? He didn't average 30 on 55% shooting? Once again, this is the standard that Michael Jordan set for himself, right? So they'll say things like Michael Jordan choked in an NBA Finals, even though he won, his team won four games to two. He led the team in scoring and steals, right? He led them in free throw attempts, right? He was putting pressure. He was guarding. He was playing defense. He was doing everything on the court. But he choked in that Finals. In the Finals, he won Finals MVP, by the way. This is the standard Michael Jordan's held to. But also something that I've always noticed, guys, that keeps happening, especially as of recent, the last several years, is this idea that Scottie Pippen was a great defensive player than Michael Jordan based off of the fact that Scottie Pippen guarded the other team's better perimeter players. This is a false narrative, guys, that's been started over the last several years now to try to take away from Michael Jordan's greatness, his overall game. They try to take away from here, from there, and they attack the Michael Jordan's defensive end by trying to, once again, highlight Scottie Pippen's greatness on defense and say that Scottie Pippen was the one guarding the other player's main offensive threat in the perimeter. Once again, guys, this is not true. Now, yes, did Scottie Pippen help Michael Jordan on the defensive end? Absolutely. That's why Scottie Pippen was there. That was his main objective. His main job was to help on the defensive end to be the great defensive player that he was on defense. What are we talking about here? Scottie Pippen wasn't an offensive threat, right? He wasn't a leader, right? He wasn't mentally strong. He didn't have the highest IQ. His greatest attribute was what? His defensive abilities. So for people somehow all these years later to try to highlight Scottie Pippen's defense as if that takes away from Michael Jordan's defensive abilities is insane, guys. It's asinine. Like I said, it's laughable. Because once again, only Michael Jordan, he has to play top-notch defense all season long, right? 
and carry the balls offensively all season long every single year. Only Michael Jordan supposed to do that. You guys name me another all-time great that was the best scorer in, in the league and the best defensive player in the league, but they were supposed to guard the other team's best player uh, game in and game out, season after season. They didn't have any help and carry the team on offense. Name a player that's done this in NBA history. No one's done that, guys. No one has done that. Everyone has gotten help. Think about Will Chamberlain, guys, for an example. Will Chamberlain has seven straight scoring titles, guys, right? Seven straight scoring titles. But what was the problem with Will Chamberlain? He was not winning, right? He was not winning. So what did Will Chamberlain decide to do? He understood and figured out, you know what? Let me focus on what? Let me focus on my defensive abilities, my rebounding, and let the other guys do the offense. That way I can impact the game at a higher level by doing other things. And what happens? The first championship that Will Chamberlain won in uh, 1968 with the, with the Sixers, Will Chamberlain was like the fourth or fifth leading scorer, guys, in the finals on that team. Other guys were scoring. But what Will Chamberlain did, right, was he rebounded and played elite-level defense. So I'm not saying that Will Chamberlain was the best player on the team because he didn't lead them in scoring. What I'm showing you is that even Will Chamberlain understood that I can't do both things. He couldn't do both. He couldn't lead the league in scoring every season and win. So he had to adjust his game, right? He needed other guys to pick up the slack for him on offense. So he focused on defense. He didn't do both. Bill Russell, same thing. Did Bill Russell lead the Celtics in scoring every season and be the best defender on their team every season? No, he did not, right? Sam Jones scored. John Havlicek scored. Bob Cousy scored. Tommy Heinsohn, Bill Sharman. All of these guys scored, right, or were the leading scorers at some point in time. Whether it was a playoff series here, a playoff series there, the regular season, whatever the case may be. And Bill Russell focused on the defense and rebounding. He didn't have to carry both sides of the team. Did he? No. Only Michael Jordan's supposed to do this. Right? Now, all these years later, they won't give him any credit. They'll say Michael Jordan wasn't that great of a defensive player because Scottie Pippen was going the other team's best perimeter player. Once again, why is Michael Jordan to lead the Bulls in scoring, lead the entire NBA in scoring every single season for them to be competitive, and he has to guard the other team's best player on the perimeter? Only Michael Jordan is supposed to do this, guys, every single season at the highest of levels on both sides and win at the same time. Only Michael Jordan's held this standard, right? Is anybody else held this standard? No. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, has he held to that standard? How many championships did Kareem win in the 70s? Does anybody remember? He won one championship in the 70s, guys. And when was that? When he had help. When he had other guys doing other things for him to pick up the slack, so to speak. Oscar Robertson, Bob Dandridge, right? Some of these other guys. It wasn't Kareem Abdul-Jabbar winning all these titles. When did he start winning again? In the 80s when Magic Johnson came around. James Worthy, Norm Nixon, Jamal Wilkes, right? All these guys picked up the slack. They did other things. Michael Cooper, right? Did Kareem have to, uh, Kareem have to guard all the, the, the best perimeter players? No, he guarded his position, right? Only Michael Jordan is supposed to guard other guys that are not his position. He's supposed to guard everybody because he's Michael Jordan, right? He's held to that standard. Right? Did Magic Johnson guard the other team's best perimeter player every single game, every single season? No, he did not. Michael Cougar took those responsibilities off of Michael Jordan's, off of Magic Johnson's hands. Same thing for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Did he have to carry the Lakers offensively? No, he did not have to carry them offensively like Michael Jordan had to carry the Bulls. Right? So Kareem could focus on rebounding and playing defense. Magic Johnson was leading the offense, the fast breaks, the playmaking, getting guys easy looks. Guys like A.C. Green, James Worthy, Byron Scott, Michael Cooper. All of these guys were there. Does anybody take it from Magic Johnson? How come Magic Johnson didn't guard the best perimeter player every single game? Did they take it from Magic Johnson? No. Did Larry Bird guard the best perimeter player every single game? No, he did not. No, he did not. I'm pretty sure Dennis Johnson was there. Who was guarding Michael Jordan, guys, during his 63-point performance? That was mostly Dennis Johnson. Now, I'm not saying that Larry Bird should be guarding Michael Jordan in their different positions, but this is what I'm talking about, guys. 
This is what I'm talking about. You're going to sit there and try to tell us that Scottie Pippen was guarding all the best perimeter players every single game, every single season. That's not true. Scottie Pippen guarded his position. Michael Jordan guarded point guards, shooting guards. I told you guys, Michael Jordan was the defensive player that the Bulls went to when it mattered most. When it mattered most, it was Michael Jordan giving the assignments. He was the one guarding, guarding Reggie Miller in Game 7 in the fourth quarter. He was the one picking up Gary Payton in the 1996 NBA Finals when Ron Harper had the knee injury. That was Michael Jordan, guys. He was the one shutting down Clyde Drexler, not Scottie Pippen. Scottie Pippen was struggling with Jerome Kersey in those finals in 92. They talk about the 1991 finals with Magic Johnson, and they love to lean on that. Oh, Scottie Pippen, man, if it wasn't for him switching on to Magic Johnson, that was... No, go back and watch game one, guys. They did not lose that finals because of the defense that Michael Jordan was playing on Magic Johnson. They lost that first game because no one else showed up besides Michael Jordan. What's the game? Horace Grant did not show up. Scottie Pippen did not show up. Bill Cartwright, Craig Hodges, Livingston, BJ, Paxson, all these guys, they were nervous. You could tell. Their first NBA finals, they weren't ready. Only Michael Jordan was ready. Everyone else was nervous. No one else performed at the snuff. And the Bulls only lost by two points. A game-winning three by Sam Perkins in the, in the last seconds of the game. That's how they lost that game. They won four games for one, guys. And I told you guys, in game three, Scottie Pippen wasn't there. He fouled out. It was Michael Jordan who had to carry the Bulls to an overtime win and shut Magic Johnson down. Remember, the reason why they switched Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen in that finals so often is because why? Guys, I told you. Michael Jordan was needed on the offensive end, right? They didn't want Michael Jordan fouling out, guarding Magic Johnson, right? So I told you guys, Scottie Pippen was expendable to that degree. They put Scottie Pippen on him, switched him on and off. They're two different kinds of defensive players, different dimensions, things of that nature, right? Different defensive styles. So they would switch and give Magic Johnson a hard time. You know what's funny, guys, is you hear all this stuff all these years later, about Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson and uh, Magic Johnson doing this in the finals and Michael Jordan couldn't guard Magic Johnson. They had to put Scottie Pippen on it, blah, 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 blah. They make it seem like Magic Johnson was some scrub or some no-name guy. Magic Johnson's the greatest point guard in the history of the game. He's a top five player in the history of the game, Magic Johnson. And we're supposed to feel bad or supposed to be uh, an insult to Michael Jordan because he has having problems guarding Magic Johnson, who's bigger than him? Who is a legend? I don't understand what we're doing here. Once again, we're trying to lower Magic Johnson down to make it seem as if, oh, Michael Jordan couldn't guard Magic Johnson. No one could guard Magic Johnson. That's the point. They did their best against him. And Magic Johnson still had a great series. He still played great. Yes, they made him work for it, though. They made him earn it. That's the point. But only Michael Jordan, guys, has to carry the team on both ends. Or what will they say? Oh, Scottie Pippen was a better defensive player. He guarded the other team's best players. No, he did not, guys. From time to time, Scottie Pippen would guard the other team's perimeter players. From time to time. But once again, this was supposed to be Scottie Pippen's job. That was what he was supposed to do for Michael Jordan. Allow Michael Jordan to rest a little bit, right? Not have to always guard the other team's best player. Take some of the weight and burden off of Michael Jordan. So let him take the second perimeter guy, you know, so that he can have his energy for offense. Because once again, the Bulls never had another offensive score besides Michael Jordan. So they always needed Michael Jordan's 30 points per game. Think about that, guys. Who else in NBA's history was required or asked to basically score 30 points a game, guys, for his team to be competitive and also be the number one defensive player on the other side? Name a player, guys. Kobe Bryant? No, Kobe Bryant did not lead the NBA in scoring 10 times, right? Kobe Bryant played with other guys, right? Kobe Bryant didn't have to average 30 every single game for the, for the Lakers to be competitive. Michael Jordan literally had to average 30 a season for the Bulls to be competitive, for them to win, and they want him now, all these years later, to have been the best defensive player every single year, every single game, night in and night out. Only Michael Jordan, guys, is held to the standard, guys. No one else. Did Tim Duncan have to lead the league in scoring, lead his team in scoring every single season, and be the best defensive player every single season on his team? No, he did not have to do that, right? I told you guys, there are many times where other players stepped up for these guys, right? Tim Duncan wasn't the finals MVP in all of his finals. Tony Parker led them in scoring in the 2007 NBA Finals. He led them in scoring literally the entire playoff run. 
Michael Jordan never had a playoff run where someone else outscored him. Never. Never once. None of his teammates ever outscored him. It was Michael Jordan always carrying the Bulls. He's the only one. No other player in NBA's history has had this standard held for them, man, where every year they got to be the number one offensive threat and on the defensive end, they must guard the other team's best perimeter player night in and night out. Only Michael Jordan is held to the standard, guys, and they'll tear him down by saying, well, Scottie Pippen was guarding the other teams. What else is Scottie Pippen to do? I'm, I'm sorry, what other job did Scottie Pippen have? He had no other job. He literally was not a leader, no leadership. He wasn't the best playmaker on the team. The triangle offense ran through Michael Jordan, guys. Yes, yeah, Scottie Pippen played point forward. Great for him. But he, he's passed the ball to Michael Jordan. It's Michael Jordan who everyone is feeding off of. Don't forget this, guys. Michael Jordan is who everyone fed off of. Everyone, including a Scottie Pippen. Without Michael Jordan there, without his offensive game to garner all the defensive attention, all the game plans by the coaches, none of these other guys are doing anything, guys. None of those guys can get a basket on their own. None of them. And at the same time, Michael Jordan, though, has to be the best defensive player every single night, every single game, every single season. Only Michael Jordan, guys. Only Michael Jordan. Like I said, think about NBA's history, guys. No other player has had to carry their team offensively, averaging 30-plus points a game, leading the league in scoring every single season for your team to be competitive because you have no other scores on your team. And at the same time, he's the best defensive player on his team. No one else has to do this burden. That's Michael Jordan, guys, year in and year out. No one's had to do it as consistently as Michael Jordan. But all these years later, they'll tear Michael Jordan down by saying that he didn't guard the other team's best player now. What are we talking about here? There were many, many years where Michael Jordan was leading the league in scoring and guarding the other team's best perimeter player. Every single season, guys. His first year in the league, right? 87, 88, 89, right? Until about 1991. That's when Scottie Pippen started to come into his own. All those other years, that was Michael Jordan, guys. This is why he developed the reputation that he did on the defensive end. This was by accident. Remember, Scottie Pippen got a good view of Michael Jordan's 1988 season from the bench. From the bench, guys. Right? The MVP, Defensive Player of the Year. Right? All that that season, 80, 1988. Scottie Pippen got a good, good view of that from the bench. From the bench. Seven, what do you average? Seven points a game. Didn't start a single game, guys, in the regular season. Remember, guys, Michael Jordan is the greatest defensive player than Scottie Pippen. I don't understand when this started to happen that people started to say, oh, Scottie Pippen was a better defensive player. And they say it so matter-of-factly. It's not, it's not true. It's not true. There's no world where Scottie Pippen was a better defensive player than Michael Jordan. He did nothing, guys, better than Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan had the better instincts, the better athleticism, the quickness, the speed. He had better hands, right? He had bigger hands than Scottie Pippen. He had better athleticism than Scottie Pippen. Better instincts, a better defensive IQ. He was a better help defensive player, a better defender in the post. He was a better defender in the perimeter, in the passing lanes. He did these things better than Scottie Pippen. This does not mean Scottie Pippen wasn't a great defensive player. He just wasn't on Michael Jordan's level, guys. All the accolades, all the numbers show that Michael Jordan was a better defensive player. But when you watch the games and you watch the film, guys, you can see that Michael Jordan was better. He did things better. He moved better. He was greater. He had defensive moves. Like I told you, the intangibles on his defensive abilities, the instincts of his defensive abilities, the IQ of him on defense. He made the plays. Did, did Scottie Pippen make the play against Carl Malone in 1998, game six? No, Scottie Pippen wasn't there to do those things. What great defensive play did Scottie Pippen ever make at the end of a finals game to seal the deal? Right? But they keep telling that Scottie Pippen was a great defensive player because he guarded the other team's better players. This is what they use. Because there's no metric you can point to that shows that Scottie Pippen was a great defensive player. Right? Once again, the numbers point to Michael Jordan. When you watch the film, it points to Michael Jordan being a great defensive player. Michael Jordan was better for a longer period of time than Scottie Pippen. His, his longevity on defense was greater than Scottie Pippen's. Where was Scottie Pippen's defense in 1999? Or in 2000? 2001? 2002? Michael Jordan was an all-team first defensive player at 33, 34, 35 years old while leading the league in scoring. Scott Pittman could never dream about doing this. No one could dream about doing this. No one's leading the league in scoring and being the best defensive player, guys. Let me know when someone leads the league in scoring 
and is on the all-defensive first team every single season consecutively, guys. It won't happen, man. The energy to do these things, and this is what we're always talking about. This is why Scottie Pippen helped Michael Jordan on the defensive end. You know how much energy it takes to carry your team offensively every single night, year after year, and lock down the other team's best perimeter play? Are you kidding me, man? Get out of here once again. Only Michael Jordan, guys. No one's held to that standard. Not LeBron James. No one's held to the standard. How many times LeBron James lead the league in scoring and make first team all defense? No, when? Never did this. So you guys know the deal, man. Once again, there have been some great, great players in this NBA, great offensive players, great defensive players, great two-way players. No one greater than Michael Jordan, guys. I told you other players sacrificed other aspects of their game, right? They allowed other players to pick up the slack for them, to help them in these aspects. No one brings down their greatness for that. Only Michael Jordan is, tear, is torn down and trying to, you know, try to say that Scottie Pippen is somehow more impactful than he was. One and nine without Pippen. Scottie Pippen was a better defensive player. Scottie Pippen was a reason the Bulls went over. So now Scottie Pippen was a leader now. No, he was not. Get out of here, guys. I grew up watching this stuff, man. People can say whatever they want. You know, sometimes you get people, oh, this guy keeps crapping on Scottie Pippen, man. Once again, I'm not crapping on Scottie Pippen. If they would stop trying to pump up Scottie Pippen into a realm that he's never been, then we wouldn't have to set the record straight. Once again, we're setting the record straight. And these people don't like that stuff, man. You guys know the deal, man. Michael Jordan's always held to a high standard, man. Michael Jordan was the greatest two-way player in the history of the game. He was the best player on offense and the best player on defense in his era. You guys know the deal, man. I'll catch you guys on the next one.